Hey guys, welcome to my new tutorial and in this video I'm going to be going over how you can edit landscape photos in Adobe Lightroom. And this isn't the only way, all I'm going to be showing you is the kind of things I usually do. So this might or might not help you, but let's jump right into it anyway. Okay, and very quickly before we get into the tutorial, I've had a few people message me on YouTube recently asking for my camera settings that I use for specific photos or actual tutorials and how to capture the photos. And if we have a look at my DeviantArt here, you can see I do quite a bit of landscape and sunrise and sunset work like this. And if you'd like actual tutorials on how you can capture them like this or get better photos, anything like that, like I'm still learning and you can see I've got a few of this newer type of stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, you know, leave a comment down below letting me know. And also if you go to these photos, you can see the camera and all the settings that I used for each photo if you're interested in something like that. Okay, so yeah, let's just jump right into the tutorial. Now here's this photo that I took yesterday and I'm going to be showing you how you can turn it from something like this into something that looks like this. And as you can see there's a huge change there. I've leveled out the photo, I've really bought out all the colors and the clarity and I've just made everything look a little bit better. Let's just reset this and jump right into it. Okay so we're going to start at the top as usual and if you noticed I did level out the photo so I'll just do that quickly to get that out of the way. What we're going to do is get the crop overlay here by pressing R or clicking up here. And you can just click this little angle symbol here which looks like one of those bubble levels. And click on the horizon and drag it across straight across the horizon in the photo like that. And you'll see that's one easy way to level it out. Now if you don't have the horizon in your photo you can just do it until you're happy. But that's the simplest way to do it for landscape photos. Okay so now we're going to move down to white balance and I usually just set it to auto and then slightly adjust it from there but that seems to give off quite a nice effect already. Now this will vary depending on your photo so you won't be able to copy my settings but I'm just going to go through this as if I'm editing this photo for the first time. So I'm going to slightly bring up exposure. Now what that's going to do is pretty much increase this glowing effect we've got happening in the clouds and it's going to really bring out the nice highlights in the clouds and yeah we're just going to move it up very slightly. Now we're going to bring up the contrast quite a bit to about 25 and if you're wondering how I'm adjusting the values by increments of 5 like that all I'm doing is holding my mouse over that slider and pressing the up and down arrow keys. Uh, so now we'll keep moving down we're going to adjust the highlights up just a tiny bit bring up the shadows quite a bit to fill in some of these darker spots maybe not that much sorry about about there and we'll leave the whites uh, as it is that's not going to change much and then we'll bring up the blacks a little bit more as well to fill in those spots and what that's going to do is pretty much give the image a better dynamic range and it's not going to have so many dark parts or so many blown out parts it's just going to look a whole lot better once we're finished okay so now we're going to move down to clarity and i'm just going to bring that up to about plus 40 and you'll see if we just toggle that on and off it makes a huge difference it just really defines the edges of not only the clouds, but all these mountains and this wooden structure and uh, my brother here who's in the photo. Uh, so now we're going to bring up vibrance a little bit more to bring out the colors a little bit. And then we're just going to drop saturation very slightly. And if we just reset the whole image, you can see we've already got quite a big difference. Okay, so now we're just going to adjust the tone curves very slightly. We're not going to touch the highlights, but we're going to bring the lights down a little bit. And we're going to bring the darks down and then bring the shadows down. Okay, so we're going to skip the hue saturation and luminance tab. We're not going to adjust any of that. And we're going to go down to split toning. Now for the hue value here, we're going to bring this up to about 45 and bring up the saturation. And what you can see this doing is um, pretty much bringing that nice orange effect into the photo, which is going to give a nice color to the dirt down here and a nice skin tone color to my brother. And we're going to leave that to about there. And then we're going to bring in a bit of toning to the shadows. So for this, we're going to go for a bit of a blue color and about 210 should be fine. And then we're not going to bring the saturation of this one up as much, but just to about 20. Okay, so now that we've finished that, if we just flick on and off the split toning, you can see it made quite a big difference. It added a nice skin tone to my brother's arms and face here and added a nice color to the gravel. And it also added quite a nice haze looking effect to the sky in the distance and just added some nice toning to the photo. Okay, so now we're going to move down to the sharpening tab and I always like to sharpen things a little bit so I'm going to bring this up to uh, about 40 and the radius we're going to leave at about 1. Detail we're going to bring up to about 35 and masking will be 0 and this is pretty much the settings for the scenic sharpening preset that's in Lightroom already. 
Okay, so we're going to go down to lens corrections now, and since I shot this at 16 millimeters on a full frame camera, uh, there's going to be a little bit of light fall off and a bit of distortion, so we're just going to flick this on and then remove chromatic aberrations as well. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're actually going to go down to the vignetting slider here and reverse the light fall off there, because I actually quite like the effect that gives on the photo. So if we just reset that, you can see it just darkens up the corners, makes it look a little bit more saturated, and yeah, I just quite like the look of it. Okay, so that's pretty much it, and there's one last thing we're going to go over, and that is the graduated filter here. So if we just reset all these values, and we just click on our sky here, and drag down to about the horizon, then we can start adjusting some of this. So what we're going to do is bring up the contrast for one, and then bring up the clarity a tiny bit, and then bring up our saturation. You can see we're just really bringing out the colors and the details in the sky. We've got some light rays happening, and it's all looking pretty good. We can bring down the color temperature a little bit to add a bit of a blue tint to the clouds. Then we can bring down our exposure to bring out the clouds a little bit more. And then what we can do is just make this filter more graduated by dragging up the edges and then pulling the center down a little bit. And you can see with and without the filter there's quite a big change to the sky. And that's one way to really bring out the skies within your landscapes. So there we go. It might not look exactly the same as the original one I showed you, but it's pretty damn close. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope this helped and answered anything you were looking for. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Or if you have any tutorial suggestions, leave them down below as well. You can check out the rest of my photography at my DeviantArt page, which the link is in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.